arriving in Britain and seeing rows of terraced houses with smoke coming out of the chimneys and thinking they were factories because the only places in, in the Caribbean where smoke came out of the chimney was a factory. Uh, most of them had to buy a, a, an overcoat. <laughs> this is my dad behind me, that's my dad in the middle there. And uh, he didn't have an overcoat then, but that they would have, first thing they would have done is bought an overcoat because it would have been so bitterly cold for them. Arrivals at Tilbury. The Empire Windrush brings to Britain 500 Jamaicans. Many are ex-servicemen who know England. I'd like to ask you, please, are you a single man? I am a single man, my, only my mother that is depending on me. And I'm also an ex-serviceman. You're ex-service, RAF, yeah, are you? RAF. I took a course in Scotland in case making. And uh, I'm desirous of going back there to see if I can further because I like it very much. And I'm trying to help myself and also help my mom. Even though they were asked to come, uh, local people d d didn't want them there. There were signs in windows saying, no blacks, don't, don't, don't come here, don't, we don't want you here. And so they had to put up a, a lot with a lot of uh, discrimination. He started a group in the late 40s. They released a single that was never really a hit, but it was played on the radio, for and it's still played today. For generations it's played. Um, and it's called I Am A Mole and I Live In A Hole. And I know a lot of people of a certain age will remember that song. And my dad was the bass voice who sang, I am a mole and I live in a hole. I've had a lot of drinks bought for me because of that. We are getting there. As an actor, I've worked, I've done some, as people tell me, some incredible things. As a, as a black person, to play Bill Snibson in Me and My Girl, who was a, an archetypal Cockney character from nine, uh, 1938, to play Fagan, to play, to all intents and purposes, Barry Manilow in Copacabana. You know, I keep doing that in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. That's the big one for me. I couldn't believe that. There I am, a black man on stage, playing the leading role, Caractacus Potts, and I have two children with blonde hair and blue eyes, and my father is Russ Abbott. It doesn't get more diverse than that, does it? Nina was sleeping in her cot on this farm in this very pretty rural area and they were woken up by a loud banging on the door at four o'clock in the morning which was part of a deliberate tactic uh, and the soldiers came in and told them they had half an hour to pack and then put them on sledges through what was one of the coldest winters ever recorded in Poland. It was about minus 40 degrees at that time. They were put on sledges, taken to the station, the railway station, where along with all the villagers from nearby and uh, in total about a million and a half Poles all in, uh, they were put in these cattle trucks, rammed so tightly that they couldn't sit down, they had to stand uh, or take turns and sent off on a thousand mile journey to Siberia. Um, although Yanina was only tiny, she does remember that journey. She remembers the soldiers coming into her house because she was in a cot with bars and she had these, she saw these tall black boots that the Russian soldiers had on. That's a very vivid memory from when she was three years old, these tall black shiny boots. It just so happened that the ship that was commissioned to take Yanina and her mum and uh, sister to England was the Windrush. They were taken to an army camp at Barons Cross in uh, Lempster and what the government had done was uh, it had actually set up um, army camps all over Britain to receive the military soldiers who had fought in World War II and their families and quite substantial provision it set up little Polish communities with Polish schools and hospitals. So it was almost like little bits of Poland all over Britain to allow the, allow the Poles to settle um, and eventually integrate in, into society here. Being brought up in Britain, the war is very much, or has always been presented to me, as a really big triumph with Churchill and the victory parades and the Battle of Britain and Dunkirk and we liberated Western Europe and I did not appreciate that Eastern Europe had not been liberated. Um, I thought it was desperately sad that you have the Poles, 100,000 plus troops, fighting with the Allies, thinking that they're going to liberate their country and go home at the end, and they couldn't. So uh, that's, uh, that's actually given me a shiver, I've actually got goosebumps right now thinking about it. 
So I felt that that narrative, that part of the war, is something that really deserves to be in West collective memory, um, as well as our view of Churchill. There is a Polish Windrush generation, and the Polish community has contributed enormously to this country too. And I wanted to try and use this anniversary, the 70th anniversary, to raise awareness of that. We had a happy time. We had a really happy time. They had these Calypsonians, you know, providing music. The plan was to come to England, get a good job, work for about five years, go back, re rear fat children and watch my vineyards grow. <laughs> but it wasn't to be. <laughs> Within five years, I started a family, married, had bought me house and working hard and settled down. It, it, it's disgusting. It shouldn't be happening. Personally, I have had a beautiful life. I have raised a beautiful family. I have reasonably good health. I travel every year. America, Jamaica, and other places. Yeah. I've had a beautiful life. <laughs>